Shout out to Phaser FPV for providing the antenna and thank you for Hugo and his time talking through what I wanted to do. And this might not have any benefit to anyone else, but it's had a benefit to me. Okay, so I have my DJI FPV controller for the DJI FPV digital um, system and what I'm going to do is everyone has been upgrading the antennas on their goggles to true RC um, directional antennas and they've been putting on you know even just stubbies and things like that uh, axia antennas and they're reporting a lot better um, signal from their goggles and putting them on their drones as well um, also helps a lot in um, getting the video signal but then people are complaining because their video outperforms their radio and they're like oh no i have to use crossfire because i want long range but the biggest thing is these here are not optimal antennas if you're looking at this as a package if you're increasing the range of your video transmission and your video receiving transmission and you have patch antennas and things like that directional antennas but then you don't do the same thing to the radio then um, you're going to not receive the same benefits from the radio as you did when you have original antennas original antennas on your goggles um, because DJI have tailored this to um, sort of reach a certain distance in certain situations at the designated power level that you've set so if you go changing one part but not the whole package then it's not going to benefit you Okay, so I just discovered there's a little thumb bit here and you can lift that up and you can get to the screws. You don't have to peel all of that off. Okay, it takes a little bit of force. Probably could have done that better, but there is a ribbon connector that's for your battery that goes into there at the back. So that's the back of the DJI FPV remote control. Now up here, this is the inside the electronics. Now I can see the cable going back around underneath and then it loops through to here and there's a big heat sink and fan on here obviously for making sure that the transmission stays cool these gimbals you know they look very similar to what we would find on a Tyrannus etc um, I don't think it would be too hard to upgrade these gimbals if we decided to. So it looks like I can take the heatsink off by one, two, and three screws. So I can see what sort of connectors are underneath. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. I'm, I want to see what sort of connectors are under there. So then I can go ahead and order some antennas. I'm hoping that they're just MCX. If they're not, no, I can actually see they're not. It looks like they're IPX connectors. You can see the IPX connector just right there. I'm gonna remove the heatsink for scientific purposes. Okay, so I removed the heatsink, 
just three screws and I've unrouted the IPX cable out from behind the break off board for the switches and down around the gimbal and underneath the main board um, I'm going to measure it and tell you what sort of length you're going to need to get to the RPSMA okay so 8 inches about 8 inches or 20 centimeters so I'm just going to get a pair of tweezers I'm just going to pop that up okay just unfold that I'm going to get the tweezers put it in the center and just grab the cable you can see I just pulled it straight out okay and then it's threaded behind this little button board so I'm going to grab it on this side with the tweezers and I'm going to do the same thing just pull it until I have enough to grab it with my fingers Put this back down and just threading the, the cable back through. Okay, now I've got a very small flathead screwdriver right here, and what I did with the other one is I push the antenna down a little bit and I put the antenna so I just pushed onto the side of it and sort of up and then pulled the antenna out I've gone and placed an order for some IPEX or UFL antenna to an RPSMA and I've designed this little plug holder which holds the SMAs because the RPSMA needs to be really long to get it through so this one will go through the hole and it's to match the original plug style that goes in there now I've printed it in TPU um, I've made the lips a little bit bigger so then it still stays in there but it's a lot easier to get out if I do want to take it out but also it's got some flexibility if I do knock these antenna these came with these dual band 2.4 and 5 gigahertz I think they're 6 dB I antenna so I could use these it's probably a little bit too much for this radio on 2.5 having the goggles nearby will probably wipe out my goggle um, feed but I'm going to install these and I have some antenna here which I can use I purchased all of these antenna from phaser FPV in, um, in Australia so I'm going to give them a shout out um, for helping me out with this build so I have the same as the goggle um, stubbies the singularity stubbies from True RC right there um, these are the left hand circular polarized the gray ones the red ones are right hand so we can then use these and I've talked to Hugo from Truasi about this and he thinks that these being 1.3 dBi will work really well so this is the antenna that we'll have on the radio instead 
Um, the other thing you could do is get a SMA to RPA SMA, um, and you could get the TRC directional linear antennas, which have a greater 5.1 to 6 gigahertz range. These are, I think these are only 5.5 to 6 gigahertz, but the uh, DJI FPV system um, covers that range, so it doesn't go out of that range, so that works really well. Other digital FPV systems do. And we have the DJI Xair left-hand circular polarized antenna as well. Um, this is directional, so it's got 120 degrees beam width. So I, if I have one of these on my goggles and I'm flying within that area and I have one of these on the radio, I'm probably going to still have signal. The packets that are being sent on this radio are a lot less than what are being sent from the air unit to the goggles. So um, it's going to pick up a lot better with this and you probably get better range on your radio now than your video, which is the way I would rather have it. I would rather this not fail safe and I can have extra range on my radio than have more range on my video. So I've decided to just take off this control board. It's just two screws. So I'll put them down. Now I should be able to just lift it. And route the cables exactly where I want them to go. So I'm just going to install the RPSMA connector. So it's a little spring, so there's some gaps. I left a bigger gap on this side so it's easier to get the RPSMA in. It just slides straight in. Um, so all you have to do is push it in there. There is a little lip to stop it rotating. So we just make sure that lines up and then that's locked in there pretty tight. Um, if you pulled hard enough, it does come out, but that's fine because it can just pop back in. Um, and it gives me a little bit of movement if I need to knock those antenna. Um, I have printed black PLA caps that just slide over the top. Whether I want to use them or not, it just will keep the antenna in there a little bit better. Now I'm going to undo the three screws on this main logic board. Okay, so I've got them all installed, all the cables routed. Now we just need to put the heat sink back on. Just push down, there's thermal paste there, so it sits on nicely. There's only three screws that hold that together. Okay, and that last thing that needs to be done is plug in the fan again. Just tuck that up under there. The plug for the, the battery on the back of the case is just there so we'll pop that back in
we have the option to put in two stubbies, singularity, so then it looks like this. It looks a bit funny, but that's cool. I don't mind it. Or I've got these six DBI antenna and put them up like this. Or a true RC X air directional antenna. Comes with a forty five. So we can point it up a little bit. Okay, so that would then give you 10 dBi of directional 120 degrees um, beam, which you know would give you a lot more range than what the original antenna um, linear aerials were giving that they were originally using. Okay, so hopefully soon I'll do another video and we can test the range. I'll put it on 25 milliwatt and go out with the same antenna system on the uh, goggles. So I'll put one of these on there and some singularity stubbies as well. And I'll just have this one here and we'll we'll go 25 milliwatt and we'll test what sort of distance we're getting comparing and you know it's going to be hard because I can't just go put the old antennas back on um, but we'll be able to see whether the radio is fail safing before the video in the description below I'll have a link to the 3d printed um, RPSMA plugs. Um, I'll also have a link to the antenna if you want to purchase those antenna. These were just off of eBay. I'm sure you can find them. Shout out to Phaser FPV for providing the antenna and thank you for Hugo and his time talking through what I wanted to do. And this might not have any benefit to anyone else, but it's had a benefit to me. Even the fact that I prefer to be able to change my antenna and when I want to pack it away, I want to be able to take them off um, and put it in a, in a case and then put them back on when I want to go fly so they don't get damaged. It means if I break, I already broke while removing one of them, the, uh, the case of this one. So it just pulls off. Um, so if that happened, it's a whole radio it's in Australia a $600 radio so if I broke this I would be doing a similar mod anyway to repair them so let's see how we go with range look forward to seeing you in another video I've got another mod planned for this radio to make it even better